Okay. This meeting is being called to order uh, Thursday, August 14th, 4 p.m. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Just a moment of silence to reflect on the duties um, before us. Okay, in accordance to uh, Mass General Law uh, 30A, Section 20E, I need to ask if anyone else is recording, recording this meeting other than the Board of Selectmen and LCAT. That would be me, uh, Chris Goudreau. Well, welcome, Chris Goudreau. Um, he's our, our new Chris Mazza. Okay, so at this point, um, we have some business to take care of with regards to... Um, one of our, our our potential screening persons that we voted in um, was she wanted to disclose that she had been um, placed as a reference on the application of uh, Thomas Caliento. She said it does not affect her ability to be um, non-biased, and we just need to make a note of that. And 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 now that we know about it. Do we want to continue her as a candidate? And that would be uh, Terry Olajars. I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah, I figure she'll still be independent. Right. Yeah. And and the thing is, you can always be asked to be mm -hmm. a reference, and she didn't ask him to be a reference. Right, right. He asked her. So. Okay. Okay, you okay with that? Okay, so then at this time, I'll entertain a motion to keep um, Terry Olajars as one of the... Um, the screening committee for the town accountant, and we are taking into consideration her uh, disclosure of being asked to be a reference. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion, gentlemen? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's behind us. So now, we have a full screening committee. That screening committee consists of the Board of Selectmen, yeah, um, uh, Russ Denver, and Terry Olajars. Yes. Okay. So now we'll go on to our interviews, and that's all yours. Okay. The first uh, interview we're going to have for health agent is uh, Andrew DeCruz. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. DeCruz is here. He's here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Angela Thorpe. What we're going to do, Andrew, um, uh, the three selectmen, we're going to ask you questions and rotation mm -hmm. on uh, a few things that we'd like to find out about there, why you want the job and everything. Sure. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, I want you to relax and just. Feel at ease to uh, ask whatever you want or say whatever you want. Okay. Uh, the, the first question I'd like to ask you is: uh, Tell us a little about yourself. What made you interested in public health, and what you are most and least favorite aspect of the work? So, my life, uh, my work life, revolves around culinary and the food industry. Myself, um, as you guys can see, my resume. If anybody needs another copy, I do have a copy with me. <coughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, sure, I'll take one. So my, my work life revolves around the culinary industry and the food service industry. Um, as I progressed through the food service industry up to the position that I'm in currently, uh, I got more and more interested <coughs> in the safety mm -hmm. of food and the safety of public because it was just interesting to me. Um, that so few things sometimes are done by employees or businesses to, mm -hmm. to take that step to ensure the safety of the public. 
Um, and so that's why I, I got interested in um, <coughs> the health inspection or you know health agent, just the, the overall um, health of the, the public of an individual city. Um, when I went on with the Ludlow Board of Health, uh, the commissioners, um, one Dr. Jura, um, Tim Fontaine, and um, I forgot the gentleman at the time because that was six years ago because I've been with them for about six years. You know, they all took turns in, in guiding me to, to learn all the knowledge that I need uh, in order to, to do the job um, well and to do it uh, with a purpose. And that's what I do when I do a little work for the Board of Health, um, be it any Board of Health, is first and foremost, I, I'm not there to turn a blind eye because if I do, then that's on me. Um, somebody gets sick, if something happens, somebody gets hurt, that's on me and that's on the town. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't ever want to hear my name associated with a foodborne illness outbreak uh, in the town that I would be doing any health inspection uh, things for. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I go out, it's top to bottom. You know, most of the time, uh, most of the mom and pops have more issues than do the corporate settings, like um, uh, like a corporate-run restaurant that has more than one several um, you know, any uh, corporate like McDonald's change, things like that, when they have oversight internally, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it's a much different inspection when you go out and do it, and you can tell that. So most of my job when I go out uh, is to obviously know what I'm looking for in order to prevent anything from happening to any individuals, but more importantly, educate people while I'm doing this so they know. Uh, and so when I come back, it won't happen again, or if it does, I, I know that I've ensured that they know the consequences moving forward, what it is that I'm looking for, and if it's not met, then this, this, and this could be the consequences of not being able to comply with what I'm asking them to do. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. What made you respond to the ad? Um, I was looking for something different. Uh, Lolo has 112 places that you can inspect a year, and we mm -hmm. inspect them twice a year. Um, that includes the schools, and I actually do the schools and have a, an extra stipend on top of that to do the okay. schools. Um, so being there for six years is great. I know everybody. They know me when I come in. I know them. It's it's become routine mm -hmm. and re redundant. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking for something that's different, something that, you know, I can go into a place and say, oh, I don't know these people. I don't know the, the work habits. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so on and so forth. And that's why the, the schedule I hold as a part-time employee there is because of my full-time position. It's either at night or on the weekends that I do my inspections. And I find that actually the best time to do my inspections because you can actually have oversight of uh, the employees who are working and doing the process through the food. So as opposed to going into a place and it's very slow, you can't see how they're handling food, how they're cleaning, what they're doing, the processes that you need to see in order to really make a good informed decision as to you know how they're doing um, with food safety and, and public health mm -hmm. and even kind of OSHA regulations and things like that. Um, so I find that the schedule I have now benefits me when I go out and do the inspections because I get to see a broader range mm -hmm. of different things that everybody's doing within their business. Follow up, gentlemen, please. Um, I have one though. Okay, so is, are you saying that you're only available on the weekend or weekends, or are you going to be available during the week as well? So during um, currently with the position I hold, I mm -hmm. work every fifth weekend. So that means okay. I would I would have uh, a Monday and a Tuesday available. Okay. Every five weeks. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All set. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, tell us about your certifications. Are they up to date? Which of the certifications are most important to your daily tasks? So certifications that would pertain to this would be um, the Serve Safe certification that you just have in general, but also um, I also have another certification for Serve Safe to teach it, also and to proctor it. I currently don't have a um, registered sanita sanitarian. I'm not a registered sanitarian. I am looking into that currently because, again, this is not a hobby of mine. This is something that I, I feel very strong about. And um, the schooling that I have had uh, enables me to look into that as a possibility of me getting that registered sanitarian. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Andy, what is your experience with reporting to and working with agencies outside of a municipality? So Ludlow has um, different uh, segments of the Board of Health who, who do that. So there are two health inspectors there in Ludlow and then the three commissioners on the board. 
and then there are two uh, administration people within the building, um, and then also uh, three or four nurses that do things as well. So that reporting I don't currently do. I hand my reports in. I do housing inspections, food establishment reports, um, permits on the weekends if needed, uh, and any other thing that they, they might, nuances or anything like that, that they might think I should be involved with. Um, uh, but as we're, far as reporting, I don't do any reporting. Yeah. Did, did you say you had two health inspectors? There, there are. We're both part, uh, we're both part time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a situation where a decision you made resulted in a resident or a business owner being upset, and how did you handle it? I was. I went out on. Um, was it the? Uh, it was New Year's Eve, actually. I thought it was the day before, but it was New Year's Eve. And I went to a Chinese restaurant. And for one reason or another, every Chinese restaurant to me, we only have two, are the same. They always seem to have the same problem. So it must just inherently be something um, that the Chinese restaurants are doing, you know, that is standard for them across the board, but not standard for the, the 1999 food code policy that we follow in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, so what I found in there was I hadn't been in there for a year because um, somebody else had done it before me. Mm -hmm. and I was appalled at what I saw. And I took the steps as far as to call my commissioner and say, I need you to come down here because I would like to close this establishment because I don't believe it's up, up to where it needs to be for food safety. I you know, don't want to get anybody sick within the community. And the person who was running the business at that time, she was one of the co-owners, said to me, well, you realize what this will do to me because this is the, one of the busiest days of the year. And I said, I can't take that into account when it comes to public safety. I'm not here for your profits, I'm here for the, the town uh, to make sure that they're covered and, and I'm doing all I can to ensure that if they're gonna go ahead and buy anything from this restaurant, they remain safe. Mm -hmm. So she just kept hitting that point home to me and I said, I can't, I can't consider that. That's not a, a consideration for me when I think about shutting somebody down, which I've actually only done once and it wasn't that place. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, so. <clears throat> if, if you shut something down, then mm -hmm. that means you're not doing your job properly. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, you know, and I always say that uh, with my other job, uh, you know, if, if I'm doing a review and somebody gets less than uh, meets expectations, that's on that person and on me because as a manager, I'm not fostering the things that they need in order to grow. So uh, as a health inspector, if I'm not, you know, if I need to shut somebody down, mm -hmm. uh, it's on them and it's on me because I should have had more oversight in that facility to ensure that, you know, that isn't going to happen. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy. Mm -hmm. What is diversity and what is your experience? No, that's Paul. That's right. Go ahead. Oh, but go ahead. Oh, since you started. Right. Since you started, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So you Can you seven. repeat I'll it again? Seven. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry about that, Paul. Uh, what is diversity and what is your experience with it? Um, the company I, I currently work for um, has, you know, a, a vast array of different um, diversity qualifications we need to meet during the year and it's not even meeting it's all the the employee bases I've ever uh, had a chance to manage are very diverse in themselves so you get to learn different things just like I said with the Chinese restaurants mm -hmm. um, it's the culture that that dictates how they treat the food because they treat it much different than we do in the United yeah. States mm -hmm. good bad or indifferent that's just how it happens but again if they're not going by the policies you know set forth by the state and then by anything mm -hmm. that the, the town further restricts then that's where we have to step in but you know, I, I have no issue with, with anybody whatsoever. Um, I love working with, with everybody because then you get to learn something different. Um, you know, figure out why it is that they're probably doing something, mm -hmm. and then help them figure out that. While I understand that this this isn't a practice that should continue, okay. um, but I you know, diversity is, is something that nowadays if you don't have, then I, I don't really know you know <laughs> what it is that that person might be doing with their life. So. Okay. It's all around you. It helps you um, propel yourself forward with anything you do, jobs, personal life, everything. Thank you. <clears throat> Andy, your resume indicates that you are currently working for another employer. What are your hours and schedule? This position is 15 hours per week. What is your availability? What days and hours would you be able to work for East Long Meadow, and would you have any availability in an emergency situation? So my current schedule uh, is the Monday through Friday, and I work about 6.30 to, to 4, and it takes me about an hour to commute, so I get home approximately at 5. Okay. Um, and beyond that, um, there were the weekdays if I needed to do something, and I could see myself doing that. 
uh, I'm available. And then obviously on the weekends, there's plenty of time to, to get in the necessary time per week, which to me, it isn't the necessary time per week that I look at. It's mm -hmm. um, the, the quality of the reporting that I'm doing. So I, while there is the time restriction, if I need to go over, then that's fine. I have no problem if, if one of them takes a little longer. And then if subweek I maybe miss an hour or two, I'm more than willing to, to go ahead and make that up the following week and ensure that everything is done that's supposed to. Um, with emergency situations, there's been a situation in, in Ludlow with a restaurant that had a fire, and uh, they needed to be reinspected in order to open which was, was fine. And I, they called me um, at work at 9 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I was, I was able to get out and do that. Um, obviously, being an hour away, it would take me a little longer if I was still able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what I could do if I wasn't able to at that moment is you know, get the number from somebody who I'm supposed to be going and doing the inspection for, calling them, setting up a time later in the day that might work for them, uh, for both of us, in order to get this done without restricting you know, a, a company's uh, way of making their living. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, the pay for this position is $22 per hour with no reimbursement for mileage mm -hmm. and no benefits. Are you willing to accept these terms? Yes. Okay. That was an easy question. So okay. I guess we're going back to you, Paul. And last, uh, do you have any questions for us? So um, before the other health and agent left, what was the <laughs> typical day when they went out? What, what were they doing on a, on a typical day? Which uh, one? <laughs> I probably could answer that. <laughs> That's right. Because uh, I used to ride with them. Okay. Uh, typical day was, you don't have enough hours to get things done. Uh, we've been inspecting schools, and we found a couple problems. So it takes you a lot longer going through the school, you know, than it would say, like, just going on a, a you know, high grassish or whatever so but a uh, typical day is you know you stay fairly busy running from here to there and you know like in the schools right now because there's nobody there it's tough getting janitors open this open that so you have to wait but it, you, you stay busy mm -hmm. and also also you're doing the stores um, mm -hmm. and which is I don't know if any day is typical it's a, a typical day um, and sometimes a lot of your um, time can be spent on educating um, the public um, and like you said earlier in your response if they fail you're failing mm -hmm. and so there is an educational piece that needs to be to go along with that to um, to our resident our business owners so to say um, I think we've come a little ways but we still have a ways to go and we would like to see that educational piece continue I think I speak for Paul as well when that um, comes but certainly you know if, whenever um, the past health agents have called us out on situations where they've needed a hand or two um, just for reinforcements so you got your restaurants and you have your stores and you have um, some people who want to do businesses in their halls, you may be inspecting that. Mm -hmm. And then you also have your health issues with um, uh, high grass, which presents a health problem when there are rodents that are uh, mm -hmm. coming through. So um, those are the few that I had went through. I don't know, Paul, are there some more for you? Not that I can think of. I yeah. think you guys have covered basically everything. Covered all of it. So how many uh, businesses are there that need to be inspected on a yearly basis? All in of them. Meadow? But the, the number, so like Ludlow has the 112 and we do it two times a year, so that's 224 inspections at the least mm -hmm. because there have been places that are, uh, have issues, so I go mm -hmm. back there two or three or four times, three mm -hmm. or four times, excuse yeah. me. So do you guys currently know how many are actually in the town of East Meadow? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know offhand. Mm -hmm. We just... We just gave the uh, health agent we got right now, we just gave her a list of all of them. Mm -hmm. But I forget exactly how many there were, but we have a lot. More than 112? Uh, pretty well say. Really? 112? Yeah, yeah. Nick, do you because have you a do the ballpark? AMPs and everything? Well, yeah, that includes churches, schools, right. daycares, restaurants, hotel Maybe. that we have. Um, so it includes everything. Yeah. No, you know what that means? No, we don't have a hotel in the area, but not yet. Uh, no, we don't have any hotels. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we do have a lot of work, and uh, when, you, when you inspected them, 
did you inspect them once a year, like the schools and stuff? Or the schools are actually done twice a year, and they need that for their federal uh, grant money that they get for their uh, their funding for the food. Yep. So mm -hmm. I typically do it um, in October and uh, May, okay. or April, excuse me, October and April is when I do the schools. Okay, while well, they're in session. Yes, yeah. Because then, again, I can see, yeah. uh, you know, the janitors using their chemicals, uh, if everything is operational, um, you know, uh, down to the small things. Is there enough lighting in the bathrooms? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. That's, you know, that's on inspections yeah. and everything. Uh, so I, I need to make sure I see everything. I don't go ever when they're, when they're shut down because, to me, I, I'll be missing some of it. So... Did you do pools also? Uh, I did not do pools. Uh, the, the One of the commissioners we have did pools because he was trained by the um, state pool um, inspector. And, do, and let me, may I follow up on that? Septic, the septic systems, um, Title V? There's a separate uh, entity within the Board of Health for Lovell that does that. So there's an okay. inspector that does Title V. Okay. So I guess what I'm asking, are you uh, qualified to do no. any? Not at this time. And I've okay. not done any, no. And they don't sound fun when I hear them say. <laughs> okay. You all set, Paul? Yeah, you all set. Okay, okay. you all set. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't think I have any other questions. All right. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you very much for your time. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I, I did forget to ask one question. Uh, oh. When you guys do make your decision, mm -hmm. um, whether it be a phone call, either way. Yeah. What uh, what number would you like us to call? Uh, four one three. Maybe oh, he could oh, just okay. no, yeah. Here, actually, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's on your resume, right? Yes, it's on okay. top of the resume. But here, let me give you another one. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Let the crank calls again. <laughs> yeah, we're not crank calls. Thank you very All right. much. Thank, Thank you. you. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to give my uh, my number a call. Right. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Well, yeah. I got caught on that <laughs> once. Yeah. With are you going to score these from one to ten, or how are we going to do this? Thank you. There you go. Um, we, we can just we can just do like a consensus and have a have yeah. a chat at the end. Um, yeah, if we want to do that in the future, we certainly could. But I think right now we'll just have a conversation when uh -huh. we're done with the um, interviews. Uh -huh. If that's the consensus mm -hmm. of the board. So give me a minute to get my little stuff yeah. together here. Oh, we finished early. 435 is the next one. Is Don here already? Oh, she's not here yet. Okay, we don't have any... Um, Announcements to read. So, normally, this is the time when we say, Paul, can you read any announcements? Right. But there's none to read. So, so when are you going to do that challenge? I don't know. It's sort of better, I guess. Yeah. Is, is our you, second candidate here? No, not yet. Uh, That's why we're. What do we do? A half we're just an hour? waiting. I think I could ask you some background questions. Um, Yes, okay, I'll take a motion, entertain a motion to take a recess because we're running a little bit ahead. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> well, you have to do it in the same order, though, hey, that we did. Uh, hi, Don. Hi, Don. No, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hi, Don. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Again? Nice to meet you. Okay. Don, what we're going to do, we're going to ask you uh, questions in rotation. Okay. And then at the end, we'll ask you if you have any questions for us. Okay. okay. And uh, we just want you to relax. Make like you're at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don, tell us a little about yourself and what makes you interested in public health and what are your most and least favorite aspects of the work. Well, I can just give you a little background of my experience in the field of public health. I started out it's over 20 years ago. My first job after I got out of college, with I had a degree in environmental health, I started out as a health inspector for the city of Indianapolis. And 
my primary job when I started was health inspector and I did primarily housing inspections mm -hmm. where I went into homes where there were issues with garbage out on the lawn, heavy trash, and then issues with the interior of the facilities being, you know, lack of water, lack of heat, uh, hoarding. And I did that job for approximately two years, and then I left that and I went to OSHA, and I became an industrial hygiene inspector, and I spent a lot of time doing health and safety inspections in just all types of industries. Did air sampling, did noise sampling, and I did that for approximately five years. And when I left that job, I went to uh, what was then at the time Aero Company, and I was working with customers in helping them with their selections of personal protection equipment, and that included respirators, and I did a lot of work with people in the healthcare industry and in selecting respirators for uh, viruses, disease prevention, and safety goggles, eyewear, all, all types of personal protective equipment, and so that's where I did that job for the past 20 years, and it was more I was a go-to contact for all the types of end users as far as health and safety issues. I went out with to meet customers. I did training programs. I wrote a lot of training brochures. And at this point now, I think I would like to just focus my career on public health. I think there's a very big need for health education. There's really, I don't believe there's a lot of support in education and training and, and public health issues. And that's one thing that I would really like to work with in a community and with be more like a contact with the state and trying to get some programs into the towns. I do work uh, with Sturbridge as well as here and you know we've just been talking about getting some programs started maybe um, going into the schools and doing training programs maybe like on um, biology for like microbiology and doing demonstrations to show people how they, when they should wash their hands and clean their hands and kill the bacteria, maybe do some public outreach on issues such as uh, skin cancer and using sunscreen. So those are some of the things that I would like to do. And, and as far as Bill's question, as far as some of the things that I don't like about the job, there's really, there's really not much I can say that I don't like about it. I really do like working with the public. I think the thing that just gets me most frustrated is trying to educate the public and just when there is just complete disregard of the the law or the codes. For example, um, today I had to go out to, I was working with a customer that had a small convenience store and they had a deli. Mm -hmm. And they were not properly sanitizing their equipment. They mm -hmm. just were spraying some bleach on a cutting board and wiping it with a towel. And I tried to show them that you have to soak your cutting boards in a sanitizing solution mm -hmm. and you can't wipe it with a board you know, with a cloth and you know the, the 
owner of the store is pretty irate, but yeah, I had to work with him mm-hmm. and try to get him to understand that, you know, I don't make these laws. These are the rules, and this is the best way to protect the public, and we're really here to protect people. We don't want anyone to get sick. And mm-hmm. it, um, in the end, I gave him some brochures, and he's going to work on that this week. Okay, thank you, Doc. You going to follow up with them? Oh, definitely next okay. week. Yes. Uh-huh. <clears throat> what made you respond to this ad? I was working part time in Sturbridge. I do two days a week, and I just enjoy the work. And I just wanted to just do a couple more days a week and try to get you know, just work full time doing both jobs. Okay. Thank you. Don, tell us about your certifications. Are they up to date? And which of the certifications are most important to your daily tasks? Well, the Safe Serve certification that I just got that back in May, and that's current. And I did this. Uh, pool safety course and so I'm the pool inspector of that qualification and then I also have my certification for industrial hygiene and that's current as well and that's one certification that I have to keep taking continuing education classes and I go to workshops to maintain that but I would say all three of those I do use those on a daily basis the safe serve is very important when I'm doing food inspections and as a requirement all restaurants or any place that serves food they are required to have that same certification so that that's important and then I do pool inspections on a regular basis as well so that's a good certification to have just for the background and the knowledge as far as what to look for when testing pool water and what some of the issues are and my industrial hygiene certification is it's not so critical for this job which most people that have this job they do have the sanitarian job certification but this um, the industrial hygiene covers a, most of the same issues because you have to have some background knowledge in chemical chemicals microbiology toxicology and you know when the issues come up with mold and uh, chemical situations so I would say that they're all pretty relevant to this job Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any mm-hmm. oh. okay. Thank you. Uh, Don, uh, what is your experience with reporting to and working with agencies outside of the municipality? Right now, um, I think we would work with the state like in Sturbridge on a pretty regular basis. Just. For example, today I just did a follow-up at a campground. Now the state's in charge of doing the inspections for campgrounds, and they had done an inspection, and there were some issues with sanitation in the, the restrooms and the garbage disposal, and I did get their report, and I had to go follow up and make sure that the issues in the bathrooms had been taken care of. <clears throat> And as it turns out, they were not. So what I have to do tomorrow is give the state a call and let them know that the issues that they cited have not been, they have not been repaired. And then also this week we had a call from the state and the person that's in charge of inspecting the fish mm-hmm. had called in regards to an issue with uh, Vibrio 
and they had to come in this week and do an inspection at a fish market and they had just called me and they just wanted to get some information on my past history with this particular fish market now but it's not uh, the towns don't get involved really with uh, the tagging of the fish market it was just an issue they had come up and they had to do some tracing of the tags that the owner of the company had so it's pretty much you would work with the state on a regular basis okay. Okay, thank you um, follow up please Fabrio what is Fabrio Fibrio Fibrio yeah Fibrio it's a like a parasite that a parasite. can okay. come and fish thank you Okay, can you describe a situation where a decision you made resulted in a resident or a business owner being upset with you, because we know they never get upset with you, right? And how would you handle it? You kind of said um, a situation earlier in the interview, but can you give us another one? Oh, I have many. <laughs> um, well, just today, um, I had been trying to get a report from a customer, not a customer, a hotel owner. Was, I needed to get a copy of a report that they had taken some te water testing. And if you have a pool in a hotel, you are required to do water testing for E. coli and Pseudomonas. Mm -hmm. And I have been, after this owner of the hotel I probably have called him three times I went to his site I said could you just please get me this report and as of today I had not gotten the report so I called to talk to the owner and he wasn't in and so eventually his wife <clears throat> did come in because I had told the manager that I was going to close their pool today so in the meantime I had to write a letter and I was just about to deliver it and his wife showed up at the, mm -hmm. the Board of Health and she was quite upset that you know, we were going to do that so by the end of the day we did end up getting a copy of the report so she did have it she had just hadn't gotten it and they didn't have the complete report so mm -hmm. that's just one example but you know I am working with them to get that completed okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what is diversity and what is your experience with it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I would say diversity is working with people that come from different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds. And that is one thing I think you just have to be able to work with people in their different cultural backgrounds and understanding of how they interpret the the codes um, for example um, you may have business owners that come from different backgrounds they they may be you see a lot of this issue with people that come from um, China, the Chinese, the Asians, and they have different cultural understandings and ways of doing things in their culture as far as cooking. And you just have to be able to work with them in some instances. We've had to have interpreters come in to work with, pe to work with them and to get them to understand um, what we want them to do and and then you get that with people when you have issues with uh, often with apartments and renters and you know there's just some issues with um, let's say the way they have trouble with um, maybe maintaining their, their properties mm -hmm. and cleaning but it's just a matter of you know if you can talk with people and try to be sympathetic with them and understand um, their situation and the situation that they're in um, and try to work with them 
and, and I and that's I really I try to do that I don't really want to feel like um, I ever want to be like a bully it's just best to work with people thank you Don I got a few questions in this one for you but I'll, I'll ask you one at a time uh, your resume indicates you are currently working for another employer. What are your hours and schedule? I work at Sturbridge. I work for them on my Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I work 8 to 4. And then I do my job here at East Long Meadow on Monday and Wednesdays. And then on Fridays, I just, if I have some extra work that I can do in Sturbridge, I've been just doing some extra projects for them, um, flexible on Fridays. So I could, you know, do time here, I could do time there. Fridays are just pretty much open. Okay, the other part of this question is, um, this position is 15 hours per week. Mm -hmm. What is your availability, and what days and hours would you be able to work for East Long Meadow? And would you have any availability in an emergency situation? I am, my hours are flexible, and I believe I, they're pretty flexible here, they're pretty flexible in Sturbridge, and <clears throat> if there was something came up, and when I was not able to, and I had to come, like, say, for example, if I came just to East Long Meadow on Monday and there was an emergency that came up and something had to be done on Tuesday, that really would not be an issue. I could just let um, the agent in Sturbridge know that I was not going to be able to come in on Tuesday, and then I could just allocate that work for another day that week, possibly Friday. So there is flexibility, and I can come in at um, evening hours, uh, you know, even after 4 o'clock. <clears throat> but I have been working 8 to 4, um, an 8 to 4 schedule in East Long Meadow as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, the pay for the position is $22 an hour with no reimbursement for mileage and no benefits. Are you willing to accept these terms? Uh, yes. Um, if you just clarify, I mean, that's what I understood that this was just, um, it's, you know, it's a part-time job mm -hmm. and it doesn't have benefits and that's, mm -hmm. that's our, that's fine. Okay. That's All right. Okay, Don, well, the last question is, do you have any questions for us? I do. Okay. Um, just some of the questions they're more administrative and I don't know if it's anything you can answer right now but I just want to say one of the things that I would find to be very helpful in doing this job is to have access to a computer because oh, yes. um, it, it would be helpful to be able to look up codes and standards addresses it's just a lot of information that I really would find that very useful to be able to do and then um, also too just to keep track of my mm -hmm. reports because I do just like at Sturbridge I do write a report every week and I submit it to the Board of Health and I mm -hmm. give them I let them know what places I inspected mm -hmm. and I give them a list of what the violations were and they review that probably once a month at the, the Board of Health meetings so when I think if that would be something that this board would be interested in having, I, I would do that as well. You got Question. It? Yeah. Um, do you have any experience with Title V? I know you had mentioned about the pool. Um, I do have some background for the Title V, because okay. we do have an agent that does the Title V inspections. Mm -hmm. But I just have, just through classes that I've taken, I'm okay. familiar with it. And 
I was on the Board of Health in Sturbridge for mm -hmm. um, about nine years. Oh, okay. So I did pl plan reviews and um, approvals. I, so okay. I, and just so you know, um, we do have a full up-to-date notebook of all the codes that's in the office. Um, our former health agent was kind enough to, to leave us with a copy of hers before she left, so that's in there. But um, I don't know if you need to be certified, but would you be interested in getting certified in Title Vives? I would. Okay. Yeah. And if that, <clears throat> if that was um, something that you really wanted me to pursue for this mm -hmm. position, I can work very closely with the agent that we have in Sturbridge because we do, like I said, she specifically does all the Title Fives. Mm -hmm. We don't have many, but it was just yeah. some the, that We have quite a few mm -hmm. in Sturbridge, so mm -hmm. that's where I do all the, the food, pool, hotels, mm -hmm. and then she does the, the Title Five. so okay. it would, that wouldn't be an issue I could do go out with her and do some training and okay. do some testing if, if needed, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, you good? I'm all set. I'm all set. Yeah, I'm all set. So, any further questions for you? Um, what is your time frame? I said right now you see this position as part-time. <clears throat> Do you have any plans in the future to maybe make it full time or expand the hours? <laughs> we we have a variety of opinions on that, but I'll let uh, Mr. Gorman, uh, Selectman Gorman, take that. Myself, Don, I think we need a full time health agent out here for the amount of work we got, as you could see. Yeah. Maybe I do. You, but, um, yeah. And it takes so long to do some things when you go out there, you know. And then with the paperwork you got to do when you come back in, it's you know it's definitely time consuming. So, you know, down the road I'd like to make a full time health agent. That's my opinion. Yeah. So, um, the jury's still out. I, <laughs> I think it's something that um, that should be evaluated, and we should look at it. Yeah. Um, in, in light of uh, there are some things that we weren't aware of uh, that needed to be done and so I think we need to do a full evaluation of all of the things that are need to be done and then look and see how many hours it actually would, would it actually take to do mm -hmm. um, everything that's uh, in that in that job but as of right now I don't know so I don't know okay. but I'm certainly willing yeah. to look at it and uh, uh, select so Federici as well. Um, yeah, because like I said, I would, I would like to work with the board mm -hmm. and keep you up to date with everything that is going on, mm -hmm. and um, certainly give you reports and just you know let you know how things are going and what maybe some of the needs are. Okay, that we should we would, talk I about. Think we would like that too. You know, we're kind of unique. We serve as the board of selectmen, also as the board of health. So we wear two hats. So. We certainly would um, appreciate that that input from you because you would be our mm -hmm. eyes in the community. But um, and then just to let you know that as far as you know, working the two part-time jobs, Sturbridge and the East Long Road, that mm -hmm. it works out fine for me. So that that's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. You, you got anything? No. no. Don, I just got one more. Call. You use computers in Sturbridge? I have a laptop. Yeah, you have a laptop. She would have a laptop here, too. It definitely helps you. She has a laptop here, too. You do? Mm hmm All right. Yeah, because I, I do, I write all my own letters, yeah. so I have to, I have to have a laptop. All your form to, letters? Yeah, anytime. Like, we don't have a full-time secretary to write letters. Like, I know we, you do have one here, which is nice, yeah. but like in Sturbridge, we don't have a secretary, so if I need to write a letter to and then to a customer, you know, to with all their violations, I have to type that up myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you need to do that too. Yeah. But and then it's nice too, like if I go out to a customer and they said, well, you know, just like today, you know, I just don't understand these labeling standards and 
is you know there's something you can get me to help me so I'll just go online and it's just easier sometimes for me to print the stuff out and yeah. give it to them than to tell them where to go find it on the website. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's all the um, question I have. What you want? Yeah. Oh, okay. You. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Thanks, Doc. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all. <coughs> That does conclude our um, interviews for the health agent. Um, at this time, it is 5 o'clock, and um, it is 5 o'clock, and uh, we need to um, have our interviews with the accountants. And at this time, because we are going to into where I'm going, the search committee is going to go into, excuse me, let me stop. We're closing out this meeting and then we open up the other, correct? Um, Madam Chair, there's yes. uh, on the agenda, there was an item there. Uh, that was supposed to be on the next one. You put it on the wrong one. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's supposed to be on the next meeting after all of the interviews, yeah. So, go ahead. No, it's okay. Nick, uh, Nick if ever you become perfect. No, no, I can't. You, no, no. No, no, that's okay. It's for the next one. Okay, so we're closing out this meeting. May I ask a question, Madam Chairman? I'm sorry, sure. just for procedural sake. Mm -hmm. um, if, if this meeting is then going to be closed out on the Board of Selectmen, would next have an opportunity to discuss the candidates at its meeting on the 19th. And if you made an announcement to that effect, then um, I'm sorry. Oh, saying. no, no, no. So okay, so we would we would have to, just for procedural, we would have to do this now? If you wanted to make a decision on the, um, if you close this meeting, it's my understanding that you would not be able to take that up as a piece of business over the next committee. Okay. You would have to do it as a board of selectmen, which would be the Okay, I'm just concerned that the time frame, we have a five o'clock interview. Is that what time they're scheduled to start? And it's now a little after five. Um, well, do you think we can get this done with a matter of five minutes? I don't want to rush it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we could, I don't know about Paul. Okay, yeah. all right. Go ahead, gentlemen. Start your discussion. Uh. Can I go first? Discussion. You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. All right. Um, we had, in my opinion, we had two good candidates. Um, mm -hmm. You know, both uh, both had some experience in the field. I think Don had a little bit more experience as far as you know being being a health agent. And the only other thing, like I said, we both they're both good candidates. I think Andrew was a good candidate. The only thing that worries me about Andrew is his availability because of his full time mm -hmm. job. Um, as you know, we have items that come up in town where we need someone relatively quickly. And I don't know, um, I mean, he may have given us assurances, but I don't know how, how, um, how that'll, yeah, how that'll actually work in, in a situation where we might have an emergency. So, uh, w with all things being equal and both being good candidates, I, th if you want my opinion, I think I'd mm -hmm. sort of lean towards Don. Okay. Um, <coughs> since you're the chair, I'm going to go next. Yeah. Um, I felt that they were also, um, what uh, Selectman Federici said, I, I would like to echo that. They were both good candidates, but when um, when it came to Don, uh, she had a little bit more familiarity with the Title V, and she was willing to go ahead and um, get the training to become certified with regards to that. And she also had um, pool certification which um, I didn't see that listed um, in Andrews. So, and I know that we have, um, especially our new pool, that needs to be, I mean, it's, it's state of the art, but it still needs to be um, looked over. And so I, I guess when you look at both candidates, both of them being excellent, um, I, my choice would be for Don as well. Well, uh, my opinion, I think they're, I think they're both great. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Listen to Mr. Cruz. 
they have a different setup than we do in East Long Meadow. Uh, as far as we do it all here, where they got separate people that do different things there. And one was like you mentioned, Angela, about the pools. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do the pools, we do everything here. Mm -hmm. I just think uh, Don had more knowledge as far as uh, doing a lot more um, because you know she has to do it all. Mm -hmm. Where in Lovell they do a little different than we do, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I, I'd be in favor of Pyra and Don for her knowledge and her background and stuff. You know, and, and her willingness to uh, you know take notes and give us what she does every single day. Mm -hmm. Every time she's out, I think that'll be helpful to her. Mm -hmm. And I think as um, people get to know her a little bit better, um, things will run just as smooth as, as it used to with Amy as well. Not the same that it wouldn't happen to the Andrew as well, but I think two fine candidates. Yeah. But I would have to go with Don also, yeah. like you said. Okay. I make a motion. Don. Um, to hire Don as a uh, new health agent, permanent health agent. So moved. Second. Any uh, discussion? Nope. No. Nope. All in favor? No. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -mm. So, Nick will let her know? Yeah, you let her know. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. And please let him know that he was an excellent candidate. She just had a little more um, he wanted to be called. qualifications um, as far as, um, what do you call that, um, certifications. She had more certifications than he did. Okay, so you want to call him? Yes. Gonna let, okay, you want to call him? He's going to call him. You send him a letter. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Who am I, who am I calling? Who is he calling? You said Andrew? Yeah, Andrew, call? Andrew Cruz. Okay, he's going to call Andrew. Is he going? Is he also going to call Don? Or yeah, you? yeah, you can call her. Let her know. Or well, she'll be in tomorrow anyway. Okay. Okay? okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> since we need, to, we need to, to close out this meeting, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn uh, this meeting um, on the four o'clock meeting. Somebody move it. Because well, we're closing. We have to. Oh, okay. They're so two we'll separate meetings. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Okay. Two separate meetings, right, Nick? Okay. All right. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.